G'day and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. I'm a Kiwi rugby fan living here in beautiful Mexico and in this video I'm going to be talking about that cracker of a game we've got coming up on Saturday night at the Stade de France in Paris between the New Zealand All Blacks and Ireland and what a game it's going to be and uh, I'm really really looking forward to this game and I know that there's a lot of Irish men and women out there that are looking forward to it as well and general rugby fans of course because it's going to be a game for the ages and we've seen a couple of those games already haven't we at this year's Rugby World Cup. Now these two teams have got some interesting history they've played 36 times since 1905 when they first played at Lansdowne Road in beautiful Dublin I remember going to Lansdowne Road back in the day fantastic part of the world and uh, love the Irish fans and the crowd at that stadium and uh, brings back some pretty good memories for me that's for sure but uh, since they played back in 1905, I wasn't around for that game. But uh, the All Blacks have won 30 times, Ireland have won 5, and there's been one draw. More importantly though, in recent history, the last 5 games, Ireland are winning 3 games to 2 against the All Blacks. And of course that memorable series win against the All Blacks in New Zealand. Ireland bet the All Blacks for the first time at Soldiers Field in Chicago back in 2016. And that was a pretty exciting game as well in front of a very large rugby crowd. The United States fans of rugby really got behind that one. So let's have a look at how the All Blacks got to this quarterfinal. And of course, in that very first game against France at the Stade de France, they opened the tournament and they lost that game 27 points to 13. And uh, I think there was a lot of people saying at the time, well, it doesn't really matter. It's the first game and, you know, teams have gone on to win the Rugby World Cup before after losing a pool match. And uh, that's all well and good. But I thought we saw some things in that first game that were a little bit worrying uh, from the All Blacks point of view. And also after that uh, loss they had to the Springboks coming into this year's Rugby World Cup tournament. So for me, there were some early warning signs on that All Black loss against France. And then the next three games were considered to be um, formality for New Zealand as they took on Namibia, Italy and Uruguay. They bet uh, Namibia in that first game 71 points to 3. They gave that uh, thrashing to Italy 96 points to 17. And they took care of Uruguay 73 points to 0. And a lot of people were saying, well, what was the point of those games? They didn't really set up the All Blacks for this particular clash in the quarterfinals, no matter who the All Blacks were going to play. And a lot of people saw that as a downside to the New Zealand's trajectory through this tournament. But it is what it is. And uh, New Zealand had to play those games. And we saw some pretty open, expansive rugby from the All Blacks. And a lot of people thought, myself included, that they were getting better and better throughout those games. Now let's have a look at the Irish trajectory through this tournament. 82 points to 8 against Romania to start off with for Ireland, so that was a bit of a cricket score. People thought that Tonga were going to give them a little bit of a test, but that didn't work out to be the case, and uh, Ireland comfortably won that one 59 points to 16. And then there was that big game against South Africa, and everybody was anticipating a showdown in that game, and that's exactly what we did, did get. It was a absolutely fantastic game of rugby and Ireland came out on top in that one 13 points to 8. And then the final game in the pool group for Ireland was against Scotland just last weekend a much anticipated game again and this time it was Ireland taking an easy win over Scotland by 36 points to 14 and uh, they did play very very well in that game. So two different trajectories to get to this quarterfinal. New Zealand having that tough game against France to start off with and then many weeks of looking at relatively easy rugby and being able to build themselves into this tournament. Whereas Ireland had to deal with those two tough games at the back end of their pool group uh, against South Africa and against Scotland and I think that really did Ireland a lot of favours, perhaps not from an injury point of view, and we'll get on to that in a second, but definitely from hardening up this team, setting up their combinations against good defences, and getting themselves into that really uh, high level of test and international rugby play. Now in this video I'm going to go through some key elements that I think are going to be really important heading into this game on Saturday. 
Okay, let's start off talking about injuries that we know of, or I know of, so far this week. And we'll start off with Ireland. And on their side, they've got James Lowe, Mac Hansen, and James Ryan all injured. And we've seen that uh, James Ryan has actually gone back to Dublin to get some scans on that wrist of his. And uh, we're waiting to hear an update on that. But it doesn't look too good for James Ryan, I don't think, in terms of being available for selection this week against the All Blacks. So that's one news we're waiting to hear on. And then we've got James Lowe who went off with that eye injury against Scotland. And um, he's in the fray, I think, but uh, there's gonna be a couple more days before we know whether James Lowe is gonna be uh, playing against the All Blacks. A very critical player, I think, for Ireland in the back line for a couple of reasons. And I'll talk about that later in the video. And then we have Mac Hansen as well, who watched the training today in Paris of the Irish team from the stands and uh, didn't take any participation in that. So those are the three that Ireland are sweating over at the moment. All very good players, of course. And uh, one of the things that I'm going to talk about in the video is the depth of the Irish squad and the New Zealand squad. And uh, we'll see how these guys might be able to be replaced anyway. So that's the Irish side of things when it comes to injuries. Looking at the All Blacks, Tyrell Lomax is the one that the Kiwis are sweating on at the moment. And they'll want him fit and ready to go for Saturday night because they'll want him in that front row. It's going to be a critical part of the game for the All Blacks. So there we go, that's the injuries. Now let's talk about discipline. I've mentioned it way before the World Cup started, how important discipline is going to be in this tournament. And both teams are doing pretty well. So I think we've got to look at discipline for two levels in this particular game on Saturday night. First of all, looking at yellow cards, none of the teams, either Ireland or the All Blacks, have had yellow cards so far in this tournament. But the All Blacks have had one red card, and that was Ethan De Groot, of course. So um, their discipline has been very good, and I think either are one of these teams going down to 14 men or worse on Saturday night is going to cause a big problem. So their interpretation of the referees' decisions is going to be very, very important. And they're going to have to watch themselves and making sure that that tackle height is going to be spot on. Because when they're going to be applying the fast defense, as I expect both teams to be doing, there is that margin of error that they need to watch out for. And that could cause problems. And before you know it, one of the teams could see themselves down to 14 men. But I think the more critical part of discipline in this game is going to come from giving away penalties in goal-kicking situations. So I think the All Blacks need to be very careful because Ireland can kick goals from anywhere. And we saw how important that was in that, All, um, that Ireland versus South Africa game, didn't we? In terms of goal-kicking and really making the difference in that game. They took their opportunities. So the All Blacks are going to have to be careful in their own half not to give away any silly penalties and give Ireland that opportunity to put points on the board and keep the scoreboard ticking over. Conversely, Ireland are going to have to be careful as well, getting down into their own territory, uh, giving away All Black uh, penalties to the All Blacks. Richie Moang is going to be ready to take any kicks at goal, of course, and that's going to be an area of the game that I think is going to be very, very important. Not only from a kicking point of view as in terms of goal kicking, but also territorial gains from kicking from penalties. So if you're getting a penalty around the halfway line, for instance, having an opportunity to put your forwards down on attack to use both the line-out and the scrummaging mauls that we've seen, which have been very impactful by both teams, that's going to be a very important part of this game on Saturday night. So penalties, giving away penalties, irrespective of where it is on the field, watch out for it. It's going to be... So goal kicking, and both teams have got a couple of the best in the game in Richie Moanga for the All Blacks and Johnny Sexton for Ireland. So I don't see this to be any major problem. We've also got Bowden Barrett, if he's playing for the, at fullback for the All Blacks, to come on and do some goal kicking if Moang is having a bad day. And if Damian McKenzie gets selected as well, there's another option for the All Blacks. So expect goal kicking to be pretty even in this game between Ireland and the All Blacks. It's going to be a matter of who gets some kicking opportunities within range of the post that's going to really make the difference. Okay, let's talk about defence because I think this is going to be a huge part of this game as it is with any game. And they say that defences win Rugby World Cup. So we're going to see that on Saturday night if that's true or not. And uh, first of all, looking at the Irish defence, we know the All Blacks are probably going to want to play a very high-paced, wide, expansive game. And it's going to be key for Ireland to keep that All Black backline 
in check and stop them from making decisive breaks. So defense from an Irish point of view is going to be very, very important. And so far in this tournament, bar none other team, I think Ireland are right up there with the best in the world when it comes to defense, that's for sure. And the likes of Aki and Ringrose and uh, Sexton also are very, very good at stopping, but also their inside forwards in terms of Van der Fleer, Omani and Doris are fantastic to get that early defense of line set up against the inside backs of the All Blacks and they're going to be doing some damage there. So I think defense is going to play a huge part in this game and uh, I think Ireland need to keep that All Black running game in check if they're going to have to have a chance in this game. However, from the All Black side, same thing. I think what we've seen so far in this tournament is Sexton runs across the field. He brings in a decoy runner who can take the ball up to hit second, second phase or he can put the deep ball back and set up another type of attack from the back line. So the All Blacks need to work on this. Sexton's running across the field rather than forward and he's using those two particular ploys to get Ireland on the front foot. So New Zealand would be watching this and they'll be working out a plan on how they're going to stop Sexton from going cross field and setting up that Irish attack. It's going to be interesting to see how they combat that. And I think this is going to be one of the real key points of this game. So defense from New Zealand is going to have to be very, very huge. And with particularly Geordie Barrett and Rico Ioane, who I expect to be the New Zealand centers in this game, they're going to have to take care of Bundy Aki and Gary Ringrose because we've seen Ireland in other games in this tournament be very dominant through that middle sector of the field through those two centres of theirs. So defence is going to be a huge thing. So another part of the defence that's going to be really important in this game I think is going to be around the forwards and whether it be in a set piece where the ball's picked up at the back of the scrum and a run is taken forward by either team, the defence is going to have to be really on their medal as far as that goes because there's a lot of running opportunity close to the malls in this game and I think one of the teams, if not both of the teams, might try to exploit this. So tackling close to the mall is going to be important. Don't uh, lose your concentration when there's a set piece, particularly a line-out. The Irish are very good at line-out malls and uh, the All Blacks are going to have to stop them from gaining meters because that's a way that they connect their backs into the play by having fast play around those breakdown situations and uh, having a couple of hits up with some heavy forwards in the middle. So the All Blacks defense around that close breakdown play is going to be very critical but the same goes for the Irish side as well. The All Blacks are going to be good at doing that. Shannon Frizzell has made a lot of meters in this tournament when he's been playing by going close to the ruck. So the Irish are going to have to watch out for that in this game. And of course, Adi Savia does the same thing for the All Blacks as well. Okay, let's talk about the potential strengths of these two teams on Saturday night. And I say potential because for me, whoever turns up in this game has an opportunity of winning it. And uh, both teams can't be at the exact same level. So I think one team's going to have a little bit of an ascendancy on Saturday night and as far as their strengths go that's when their strengths are going to be really able to come out and I'm talking about those situations where ball does go to hand and you don't drop that particular ball at that crucial moment or a tackle is really laid on when it needs to be laid on and it's not missed I think it's going to be very very fine margins that give away uh, the opportunity to win this game. So when I talk about strengths, I'm talking about the potential strengths of both teams when it comes to them turning up and playing their best game. And for Ireland, you've got to start off, I think, with their confidence level at the moment. They're beating everybody that's put in front of them. That game against South Africa would have given them a lot of confidence. And the series win, of course, against the All Blacks will be in the back of their mind when they come into this game, knowing that they can beat this All Black team. So I think confidence is probably one of the key strengths for Ireland at the moment. And when you've got that amount of confidence, it gives you an opportunity to be calm in the game during stressful times. And we saw that with Ireland against South Africa. And the times during that game when the pressure went on, they were able to keep South Africa out. And that's what a confident team can do. And I think that's a really, really critical part of this game. So it may not be a strength of any particular player, it's a strength that the Irish team are bringing into this game across their entire squad. And I think that's a very, very hard thing to beat. Now, the next thing I've got on my list for strengths for Ireland in this game is their depth across the whole pitch and the potential across the whole pitch to attack the All Blacks. They've got those back three and the forwards that are absolutely brilliant and getting the ball upfield at speed. 
and then they've got their back line that can crush you from anywhere whether it be bringing Sexton in to use Bundyaki and then out to Gary Ringrose or on the wings as well and Hugo Keenan coming up from fullback. So one of the strengths that this Irish team has is they have talent right across the pitch that can hurt you from any position on the field and I talk about Keenan and one of the examples I'll give there is if the All Blacks give a poor strategic kick back to Keenan that doesn't uh, find him in, in a lot of depth in his own territory then he's able to bring that ball back and set up a really good phase or even break the line himself and I think that's one of the strengths that this Irish team has as well. The big strength this Irish team has is their back three in the forwards, Omani, Van der Fleer and Doris and I expect them to have a huge game against the All Blacks and they can use the strength of this combined three to really make a difference and I've already alluded to it in terms of picking up the ball from the back of breakdowns and having a go at the All Blacks inside backs and around the half area. I think that's where the Irish can really do some damage in this game. And I'd like to see those three have a go at the All Blacks in close and just see what they're able to create. So I think that's going to be a strength that Ireland plays to in this game. And another one is going to be their ability to disrupt the New Zealand lineout. Um, Ireland are going to want to get clean ball in this game to, to control the game. And one of the ways they're going to do that is by attacking the set pieces. And I think they've got a good chance of being able to do that and disrupting the All Blacks line -out. Another strength this Irish team has, and I've got a big list of them here, um, is their ability to read the game. And I think that's going to be really important in this encounter, as it was against South Africa. So no matter what was going on during the game, it seemed to me that the Irish team had a very good read on the game and they were able to determine what they needed to do in that next phase of play. Now when I do my review of this game in the weekend I'm going to do a breakdown by each 20 minutes of the game and I'll show you exactly what I mean in terms of Ireland being able to read the game and uh, I think it's a really important factor between these two teams on Saturday night so watch out for Ireland's ability to do that. And then to some specific players in this Irish team that I think can really break the game open. And I can't start without talking about Bundy Aki. Of course, he's been absolutely brutal. He's got the most metres run so far in this whole tournament of any player. And uh, he's playing at the top of his game. And I'm sure he's going to relish the opportunity against the All Blacks on Saturday night. So watch for Bundy Aki to have another big game, not only in attack, but also in defence. And he's going to be critical in that Irish back line. Johnny Sexton, of course, is going to be pivotal. But I also put a lot of kudos into Gibson Park. He's instrumental in getting this Irish back line away and he's also a protector of Sexton. The quicker he gets the ball out to Sexton, it gives Sexton more time to do what he wants to do. Whether it is bringing in that player coming from deep or taking it to the line or putting in a strategic kick. So Gibson Park is going to be a critical factor and he's also a strength to this Irish team. And then another strength I've got for Ireland is their kicking. I think they're very, very good at strategic kicking. Um, hopefully James Lowe's gonna be in the game and I've said in a number of videos I've made about Ireland so far in this Rugby World Cup, how fantastic it is to have James Lowe in this team with that left foot boot. He can clear the ball from deep in the Irish territory and he can also set up opportunities on attack with his kicking as well. So um, kicking is very good from Ireland. Gibson Park from the base of the scrum and from the uh, breakdown play with his box kicking is very good. And Johnny Sexton, of course, can put the ball anywhere across the pitch. So I think the Irish team, as far as their kicking abilities go in general play, is a strength for this team. OK, I could go on all day talking about the Irish strengths, but it's time to talk about some of the All Black strengths as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I think one of the All Blacks major strengths is their ability with ball in hand. They're probably one of the best teams in the world when they play that open flowing rugby and they've got ball in hand and they keep control of it. So it's not only about that expansive play, it's about keeping control of the ball and not making too many errors. And sometimes in the last few games we've seen them making a lot of errors where they drop that ball or that pass doesn't go to hand. And I think this is going to be a critical part of the All Blacks strategy on Saturday night. So I think their ball in hand is a strength for the All Blacks if they get it right. And again, I refer to the point that I made about making sure that the team turns up and plays their best game. And if they do that, then the All Blacks can be as dangerous as anybody else in the world when it comes to ball in hand. Okay, next thing the All Blacks have got, I think, is a strength is their speed of play. They probably can play the game faster than any other team. 
and uh, and control the game if they're allowed to by the defense so this is a bit of an oxymoron on this one it's up to the All Blacks to play the game at speed but it's going to be up to Ireland to stop them from doing that and um, this is going to be a really interesting factor of the game so I think speed of play is something the All Blacks are very very good at their forwards are good at it as well when you watch the All Blacks forwards and they get some drive on and some momentum and they're going forward they're very very good and it combines with that ball in hand situation that I was just talking about in terms of being able to be accurate get to, get over the gain line and set up some good breaks and play and that's a key element of this All Black team. Okay next one on the strengths list for the All Blacks is their experience. There's a lot of experience in this All Black team there's a lot of memories from that series against Ireland and I think that's going to be a factor in this game. I'm not necessarily sure it's going to be always a positive factor but I think the experience gained from losing getting beaten um, is going to be really really important. Now let's face it Ireland are on a fantastic run as streak at the moment with games won, 18 I think it is and uh, the All Blacks were there once, they know what it's like, they've experienced that type of um, domination in world rugby and when you lose after a streak like that you learn a lot about yourselves and that's what this All, Black have, All Blacks have gone through. So they've tasted defeat, they've tasted what it hurts like both in a World Cup and also in a series at home and I think that's going to be an important part of this game is when it comes time to dig deep those are the memories that these boys can go back on and you really use that as motivation and drive to go forward so I think that experience is going to be a strength for the All Blacks on Saturday night. Another strength for the All Blacks is their centre pairing of Barrett, uh, Geordie Barrett and Rico Iwani I think they're fantastic players and they set up a lot of play for the All Blacks whether it be Will Jordan out on the wing or Mark Talia or uh, Bowden Barrett coming in from fullback and they're really pivotal in this All Black team and it's a strength that the All Blacks go to and they're very very good when both Barrett and Yuani are controlling that centre pairing. So yes they're up against the likes of Aki and Ringrose but I think this All Black pairing is fantastic and I think we can expect Geordie Barrett in particular to try and do some damage in that inside alley coming in from the inside centre position. So I see those two players as having a great strength in this game. Now I think the All Blacks have got a strength also in the breakdown area. I think Shannon Frizzell's on fantastic form at the moment. Adi Savia, well there's only one Adi Savia in the world. And uh, Sam Kane coming back in to play in this team. Um, he's probably the only one I'd have a question mark on. I'd rather see Ethan Blackadder in there actually, but that's for another video. But uh, yeah, the All Blacks through Savia and Frizzell in particular have a great opportunity to ignite that breakdown situation. So I think it's going to be a humongous battle between the Irish back three and the All Black back three in this game. And, and then the next strength I'd say for the All Blacks is Richie Moang is very, very good at number 10 and he can control a game very well. He does it a lot for the Crusaders. He's been doing it over recent years for the All Blacks. And I think if Moang has a good game, he could be a pivotal player for the All Blacks, both getting the All Blacks um, backs away as well as playing that good defensive role particularly with his kicking when the All Blacks need to clear out so watch for Richie Moanga he's a big strength in this All Black team and then the last one I'll say in this video for the All Black strengths that I think is that black jersey and we haven't seen enough of that in testing times of late and these boys really need to believe in that black jersey and remember what it stands for because that belief has been a little bit weighing in those games where they were beaten by France and by the Springboks and it needs to come back into their mindset and I think that's the way they kind of drum out that Irish noise in their head is to think again about the belief in the black jersey so it's all going to be about the passion that the All Blacks can bring in that first 20 minutes and how they believe in themselves in this game that's going to be a huge factor. Okay, So there's the strengths now let's talk about potential weaknesses of these two teams and I've already alluded it to it for the Irish point of view and that is that Johnny Sexton and the way that he moves the ball across the field to get his back line moving. And I think this could be a potential weakness for Ireland if the All Blacks are able to shut it down. And um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how this one plays out. I'm going to keep my eye on this from the first minute of the game because I'm sure the All Blacks are going to be targeting the way that Sexton runs across the field and ignites his back line. So this could be a potential weakness. And if Ireland haven't got a plan B around this, it's going to be very, very interesting. I suspect they will have a plan B, but their go-to play throughout this entire tournament and for some time is to use Sexton, giving him enough time where he can run across the field 
and then set up the next piece of play, whether it be from that player coming in from deep or one of his forwards running off his shoulder. So let's see what the All Blacks do with that one. The next one is going to be scoreboard pressure. Because Ireland have been so dominant in many of their games of late, they haven't really been under that intense scoreboard pressure. So if the All Blacks are able to put them under that pressure, we'll see how good this Irish team really are. And I revert back to that All Blacks game against the Springboks at Mount Smart Stadium earlier this year, where they put on 20-odd points in the first 17 minutes. And it really put the Springboks under a lot of scoreboard pressure. And if the All Blacks are able to do something similar to that, to Ireland in this game, then we're going to see what this Irish team's really made of because they're going to have to be calm, patient, and work their way back into this game. And uh, we haven't had, we haven't seen that from this Irish team yet because they've been too good against their opposition so far. So that could be a potential weakness of this Irish team. Can't really find too many other faults with the Irish team. So scoreboard pressure, cutting Sexton off and uh, perhaps injuries throughout the game, which we don't want on anybody. So I'm not going to wish that on anyone. But uh, yeah, this Irish team, let's face it, very, very strong team, very good team. And they're in a very good mindset uh, to take the All Blacks on in this quarterfinal. Now, looking at the All Black side and uh, some of my buddies back in New Zealand have been far, fairly critical of me because I've been, uh, in their words, showing some hate towards the All Blacks. Well, that's a load of nonsense. So what I've been trying to do is to analyse the All Blacks' performance since they came into this Rugby World Cup. And I'll stand by by original thoughts around this topic is the All Blacks are struggling in a couple of areas. And their main weakness on this game on Saturday night, and this I think really summarises the whole game for me, is the All Blacks being able to deal with pressure. Now we saw it in that Springboks game, biggest loss in history to the Springboks at Twickenham before the Rugby World Cup. We saw it in the France game where they got down and they weren't able to respond like the All Blacks team of old and they weren't able to deal with that scoreboard pressure. And uh, they started making a lot of unusual and silly mistakes because of that pressure as well. And then if you watch the Italy game uh, with the All Blacks, Italy scored two late tries in that game and again they started putting pressure on the All Blacks for a set pieces of play and they were able then to get in for those tries. And again, even though the scoreboard was 96 points against them, Italy were able to put some pressure on the All Blacks, and as a result of that, they were able to score two tries late in that game. And I think that was another area, even though the All Blacks were totally dominant in that game, they showed their weakness, and their weakness is dealing with pressure. And they're going to get nothing but pressure from this Irish team on Saturday night. So the All Blacks are going to have to come with their A game as far as dealing with pressure. And if they're not able to do that, then they're not going to be in this game. And that's it for weaknesses for me with the All Blacks. I think across the field they can match Ireland with player to play. There's no doubt about that. In fact, I think both teams are really evenly balanced when it came, comes to players' ability. They've both got class and speed and pace and power. But it comes down to what's going on here. And uh, at this level of rugby, that's what it's all about. And I just think at the moment, the belief for Ireland is stronger than the belief for New Zealand. And uh, that results in pressure being applied in different parts of the game. So if the All Blacks get into a situation where they find themselves behind, have they got the metal to get themselves out of it? I'm saying they don't. I'm saying that uh, this particular All Black team, that is their Achilles heel. And um, it's something that Scott Robertson's going to be working on immediately, I'm sure, when he takes up the rounds of the All Blacks. But this is Ian Foster's team. This is his moment in the sunshine. And if the All Blacks are able to deal with that pressure and get away with a win, well, I'm going to be, be the first person to put up my hand and say, good job, well done. But for the sake of this video and sake of doing a preview of this game, I'm saying that's what the All Blacks are killer healers. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you seen enough of this All Black team to agree with me? Or do you think I'm talking through a hole in my head and uh, the All Blacks are going to be fine when the Irish put the ultimate pressure on them on Saturday night? So last one, depth of squad and uh, yeah, some interesting things here. I think both teams are pretty much evenly balanced when it comes to their squad that they can bring off the bench. And uh, selection is going to be key in the making of this video here on Tuesday. We haven't got the teams announced as yet. So I will come back and make another video once the teams have been announced later on in the week. And uh, I'll get to the bottom of some of those positional areas that I think are important in this game. But I think if you put man on man, the All Blacks against Ireland this Saturday night, you've got squads that are pretty much similar in terms of their ability and their performance potential. It's about who's going to be able to bring the game to the field at the Stade de France.
Okay, so there we go. There's the key elements of the game that I think uh, are going to be important on Saturday night. Now, who's going to win this game? Well, I think it's going to come down to a fairly simple fact because I see both teams having world-class players. Both teams have players that can open up the field and score tries. Both teams have great kickers. Both teams have good forwards and great backs. So it's going to come down to one key element for me, and that's going to be who deals with the pressure the best. And when I say that, I'm talking about from an Irish point of view, coming out in this quarterfinal, putting all those ghosts to rest that they can win a quarterfinal in a Rugby World Cup. They can beat the All Blacks in one of these big tournament games, and um, how they deal with that pressure is going to be important for them. For the All Blacks, it's going to be about that pressure I talk about that we saw against France, we saw against the Springboks. They haven't been dealing with that type of pressure when the team gets a roll on them. And if this Irish team gets a roll on this All Black team, then there's going to be no looking back. So the All Blacks are going to have to deal with that pressure and come up with something that we haven't seen them come up with against a world-class team now in a few games. So for me, that's where this game's going to come down to. That's where it's going to be won and lost. And as a result of dealing with that pressure, if you do it badly, then you could lose badly. And I'm talking about if Ireland really get a roll on here, we could see a similar scoreline to what we saw against Scotland. However, if the All Blacks are able to deal with it and take that game to Scotland, then we're going to see a very, very close battle. So there you go. There's my take on this game. And I'm really interested to hear about yours as well. So why don't you drop me a comment in the, this video? Let me know what you think is going to happen on Saturday night. And to all you wonderful Irish people out there watching my videos, I just want to say well done to you. You've got a fantastic rugby team. I've enjoyed watching them play throughout this Rugby World Cup, no matter what happens on Saturday night. Of course, I've got back black blood in my veins and I want the All Blacks to win this game. But overall, I just want it to be a fantastic game of rugby. And as I've said many times throughout this Rugby World Cup, as long as rugby is the winner of this game, and we're all talking about it passionately afterwards, whether we're an All Black fan or whether we're an Irish fan or where we're a neutral fan in this particular game, then that's what I really hope for the outcome of this game to be. So enjoy the game. Have a fantastic time. I'm going to be doing a review, of course, after the game, and I'll be making previews on the other two quarterfinals we've got coming up this weekend on Sunday between England and Fiji and South Africa against France. So stick around, hit the subscribe button here on my YouTube channel and uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you again really soon. Until then, stay safe and stay well everybody and uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Until then, bye for now.